Alright, what's up family? So before I start this, let me give a disclaimer, right? Um All of this is alleged. And I'm just giving you the truth how I see it. Some are gonna get triggered and hopefully some will understand and see what I'm trying to convey. Alright, peace and blessings. The president is in the White House because of the civil rights movement. And I was a leader in that movement. And I didn't march one inch, one foot, one yard for a man to marry a man, a woman to marry a woman. So the president has forgotten the price that was paid. Where people died, where they suffered, where they gave their blood to have equal rights in the United States. And for the homosexual community and for the president to bow to the money, as Judas did with Jesus Christ, is a disgrace and we're ashamed. We will not take it back. We will not back down. And we are going to take action across this country to change the course of this president's character. I knew of this individual. His name was Barry Sotoro. And he uh, always portrayed himself as a uh, foreign student and we just that didn't mean much to me then but you know that's just what we knew about him and uh, he wasn't really close within my particular um, circle of friends he was a little bit older than me um, and he very much was within sort of the gay community which there is a thriving even back then gay community in that area, particularly the Diamond Head area. And we knew Barry as just common knowledge that, you know, he, girls were never anything that he was ever interested in. And, you know, as a young teenager, you know, as a young girl, I mean, it was clear to me that Barry was strictly into men. Now, remember, this is the late 70s. This is before crack was invented, or if it was invented, we never saw it around. I never heard of it until the 80s. So this was, um, if you were going to do cocaine, it was like in the powder form, and it was very expensive. Well, here we are, a bunch of broke teenagers, and, you know, there, in other words, for somebody to brag that they have this cocaine was, you know, somewhat newsworthy within our little clique. And he would... So he in that this he probably was telling the truth. He would get with these older white gay men, and this is how we just pretty much had the impression that that's how he was procuring his cocaine. In other words, he was having sex with these older white guys, and that's how he was getting his cocaine to be able to free me. On November 5th, 1999, I hired the services of Five Star Limousine. <coughs> Excuse me. I had hired them both for November 5th and November 6th of 1999. On November 6th, 1999, I asked the limo driver, whose name I now reveal for the first time, Jagir Paramit Mutani, if he knew anyone who would like to socialize and show me Chicago. One note, there's a typo on the statement that you will get at the end of the statement. We will put an updated and corrected version on a website that you will also be given access to, as far as the name is concerned. Mr. Mutani understood that I was looking for someone who knew Chicago and would enjoy socializing. Mr. Mutani said he knew someone who was a friend of his. On November 6, 1999, after picking me up at the hotel in Gurney, and this is significant, Mr. Mutani used his cell phone to make a call. That call was made to then Illinois State Senator Barack Obama to set up an introduction between myself and Senator Obama. Upon arriving at the bar and exiting the limo, Senator Obama was standing next to Mr. Mutani and I was introduced to Senator Obama by name. Later that evening in a bar which I believe was called Alibis, and I state believe because I have failed so far to get Citigroup to provide the credit card receipts that has the actual name. <clears throat> I mentioned I could use a line or two to wake up. Senator Obama asked me if I was referring to Coke and I stated I was. After stating I was, Obama stated he could purchase cocaine for me and then made a telephone call. This too is significant from a cell phone. 
to a presently unknown individual during which Senator Obama arranged the cocaine purchase. Senator Obama and I then departed the bar in my limousine and proceeded to an unknown location where Senator Obama exited the limousine with $250, which was provided to him by me. Returned a short while later with an eight ball of cocaine, which he gave to me. I did ingest a couple of lines of cocaine, and shortly thereafter, Senator Obama produced a glass cylinder pipe and packet of crack cocaine from his pocket. Obama then smoked the crack cocaine. I performed fellatio on Senator Obama in the limousine during the time Senator Obama was smoking crack cocaine after which I had the driver take me to my hotel, the Comfort Suites, Gurney, Illinois. The following day, November 7, 1999, Senator Obama appeared at my hotel room, unannounced, uninvited, where we again ingested cocaine and I again performed fellatio on Senator Obama. Significantly, both the driver's telephone call to Senator Obama and his call to the drug dealer should appear on the driver's and Senator Obama's cell phone billing statements. In the fall of 2007, September of 2007, I contacted the presidential campaign of Barack Obama to request solely that Senator Obama publicly correct his stated drug use record to, flect, <coughs> excuse me, to reflect his use of crack cocaine with me in November of 1999. When I made the first contact, I left with the presidential campaign of Senator Obama a telephone number for the campaign to return my call. The first number I provided was a Texas cell phone number. From the period of Labor Day weekend 2007 through November 18th of 2007, I did provide a total of four different callback numbers to the Obama campaign. As I had moved and I had changed the numbers to, to reflect locally my place of residence at the time. In late September to early October, <coughs> excuse me, I lost my place here. In late September to early October 2007, I received a call from a male who identified himself as a Mr. Young, stating he was calling in regards to calls I had made to the Obama campaign. This first call was in fact an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. This first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young asked me why I had excuse me, why I had never mentioned to the camp, <coughs> shocked me as I had never, whoa, hold on, so I'm lost here. Thanks, because this is getting, I can't even see it. The first call was in fact an attempt by Mr. Young to obtain from me the identities of anyone I contacted concerning my 1999 allegations against Senator Obama. The first call shocked me in that this Mr. Young asked me why I had not asked Senator Obama to disclose the sexual encounters I had with Mr. Obama in 1999. I was shocked as I had never mentioned to the campaign or anyone working for the campaign any sexual encounters as my call was prompted by drug allegations only. The call ended with Mr. Young stating I would hear from someone in a few days. In mid to late October 2007, I received a second call from this Mr. Young, at which time I clearly became aware that this individual was personally involved with Senator Obama rather than just an employee of his campaign. The tone of the conversation had a sexual nature. Mr. Young did not once advise me how he obtained my phone number, which by this time had now changed to a Delaware number. In late October 2007, I received a text message from the gentleman identified as Mr. Young, in which he stated he was intimately involved with Senator Obama and that Obama was discussing with him and his pastor how to publicly acknowledge Senator Obama's drug use in 1999, and that Obama wanted to be sure I had not discussed the sexual encounters or drug incidents with any media at that time. In mid to late November 2007, in another text message from Mr. Young, he advised me that Senator Obama will publicly correct his statement as to the last time he used drugs, and I did not need to concern myself with publicly disclosing it myself. The last contact I had with Mr. Young was in early December 2007, when he made it clear to me that Senator Obama had no intentions of publicly acknowledging his 1999 use of crack cocaine 
and that Mr. Young was in fact doing nothing more than milking information from me for Senator Obama's use. I later learned that A. Donald Young, the choir director of Reverend Wright's Trinity United Church of Christ, Obama's now former church, and who was openly homosexual, learned that he was murdered on December 23rd of 2007.